Fifty Famous Fairy Tales Tale number 8 Thick-Headed Jack There was once a knight who had three sons. Two of them were extremely clever, but the third was considered quite stupid. He went by the name of Thick-Headed Jack. Now it happened that the king of that land had a daughter who was very beautiful. She was so beautiful that all the young men who t that came to court her were struck dumb at the mere sight of her, and if she smiled at them or asked them a question, they lost their wits completely. The princess grew tired of this, and she was determined to marry a man who knew how to give her a ready answer and to think quickly. So she sent out a proclamation saying that any man in the kingdom, kingdom might come and try his luck. Both of the clever sons wished to marry the princess, and so they spent a whole week getting ready to call on her. The eldest knew the whole Latin dictionary by heart and could recite every column of the daily newspaper, newspaper for the past three years. The second brother studied law and knew it about state affairs. I shall marry the princess, they both declared, and they smeared their lips with sweet oil so that they wouldn't get dry and prevent a quick answer. Their old father gave them each a beautiful horse and his blessing. Just as they were starting off, up came the youngest brother and wanted to know where they were going. When they said they were going to try to win the king's daughter, the headed Jack exclaimed, Well, I think I shall go too. The brothers laughed scornfully and rode away. Father, begged the headed Jack, give me a horse. I've a mind to win the princess myself. Hold your foolish tongue, cried his father. You shall have no horse from me. You must not expect to do the things your brothers do. Well, said the headed Jack, if I can't have a horse... I'll take my old goat. So saying, he mounted the old goat and went off down the road. Hello, called Jack, catching up with his brothers. See what I have found on the road? And he showed them a dead crow. Blockhead, cried his brothers. What are you going to do with that? Why, I am going to give it to the princess, of course. You had better not, said his brothers, riding off at a great speed. Jack dug his heels on the goat's side to make him go faster and soon caught up with his brothers. Hippity hop, here I come, he called out. See what I have found now? It is not everybody who could pick up this from a turnpike road. The brothers turned to see what he had. Stupid, they cried. That is nothing but an old wooden shoe with the top part broken off. Are you going to give that to the princess? Perhaps I may, said thick-headed Jack. The brothers laughed and rode off at t of gallop until they were a long way ahead. Hippity hop, here I come, cried Jack as he caught up to his brothers for the third time. Better and better, my, this is splendid. What have you found now, asked the brothers. Oh, I can't tell you, said Jack. It's too nice. Won't the king's daughter be pleased? Dunce, cried the brothers. That's nothing but mud. Yes, agreed Jack, but just look at the quality. It's so fine it slips right through one's fingers. Thereupon he filled his pockets with the mud. When the brothers reached the town, they had to stand in line with hundreds of other suitors. All the people of the land stood in crowds around the palace windows to see the princess receive her bows. As soon as one, was, as, as soon as one of them entered the hall where the beautiful princess was seated, he was struck dumb with awe. Then the king's daughter would exclaim, Away with him! And the servants dragged each one out by the heels. At last it came to the turn of the brother, who knew the Latin dictionary, but he had stood in line so long that he had forgotten every word of it. Besides, the room was as hot as an oven. He was determined to say something, but all he could think of was, it is dreadfully hot here. That's because we're roasting geese today, said the princess, and she laughed at her own joke, for the lad certainly looked as silly as any goose in a barnyard. Ahem, ahem, was all that he could answer. He is no good, said the king's daughter. Out with him and out he went by the heels. The second brother acted as stupidly as the first, and he too was dragged away. Next, thick-headed Jack came galloping straight into the room, goat and all. Puff! It's murdering hot! he cried. Yes, but I am roasting geese, said the princess. That's lucky for me, said thick-headed Jack. Will you let me roast my crow too? With pleasure, said the princess. Do you have anything in which to cook the crow? I have indeed, said Jack. Here is a po cooking pot complete with handle. He took out the wooden shoe and put the crow inside. We ha could have a regular meal, said the princess, who loved to talk nonsense. 
If only we had some stuffing. I've got some here in my pocket, said thick-headed Jack, taking out some mud and pouring it on top of the crow. Now I like that, said the princess. You always have an answer ready, and you aren't afraid to speak. I choose you for my husband. But do you know that every word we have spoken is written down and will come out in the papers tomorrow? In front of every window you see, in this room, there are three reporters. That old one over there is in a terrible fix, for he is deaf as a post and cannot hear a thing. She only said that to see if she could stump Jack. The reporters shook so with, shook so with laughter that they dropped a shower of ink spots on the floor. But Jack had an answer ready. Oh, indeed, said he. Well, don't worry. I'll give him something to write about. With that, he took a fistful of mud from his pocket and threw it right at the reporter's face. That was neatly done, said the princess. I could not have thought of a better answer myself. And so it happened that thick-headed Jack married the beautiful princess. And when her father died several years later, Jack was made king and wore a crown. The End